What if one of the best things you could do for disease prevention was simple, easy, free, and just about anybody could do it? And what if, by doing it, you were able to positively impact every internal organ, your heart rate, your digestion, your sleep, even your mood? And what if I can teach you to do this in less than 60 seconds? You see, moms do give the best advice. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Pick your battles. Always wear clean underwear. <laughs> Marry the richest man you can stand. <laughs> no, maybe just my mom? Okay. Well, you've probably heard, close your mouth when you chew, right? And more than once. That was great advice. But even better advice would be, close your mouth when you breathe. Why? Because what mom didn't know and what most of us still don't know is that how we breathe and what constricts our ability to breathe is one of the greatest contributors to our health, well-being, and disease prevention. It is completely life-changing to improve your health through better breathing, for sure. But today, we have an under-recognized problem that's affecting our ability to consistently breathe in healthy ways. Our faces are changing. Unavoidable elements of modern day living are contributing to the underdevelopment of our airways, specifically our maxillofacial complex. That's our jaws and our mid face. And this is creating an epidemic that is unseen, unheard, and underdiagnosed in breathing. Well, maybe not always unheard. My ex is snoring. Kind of sounds like an attitude chainsaw. Anyway, my name is Kathleen Carson. I'm a mother of four, hence the really good mom advice, but I'm also a dentist who specializes in a lot more than just fixing teeth. I see patients every day with head and neck pain, jaw joint issues, disrupted sleep, fatigue, and chronic ailments where more often than not, the root cause of the problem is an underdevelopment of the mid face and jaws combined with dysfunctional breathing. The term mouth breather, it didn't come out of nowhere. Unfortunately, I learned this the hard way. This is my firstborn, Ellie. She's kind of cute, huh? She's also right there. <laughs> anyway, Ellie was born small, and the first five years of her life were full of struggles. She struggled to eat, she couldn't gain weight, she was off the charts small. She struggled to breathe. Anytime she was around groups of kids, she would get sick every time, and this made childcare for a new mom in dentistry pretty challenging. And sleep, I'm sure by now you've heard of light sleep, deep sleep, probably even REM sleep, but have you heard of mom sleep? <laughs> Ellie has. That's like the regular sleep part, but without any of the actual sleep. And this went on for years. We were referred to all the specialists, we had all the tests run, and we ended up with one diagnosis. Failure to thrive. So what exactly is failure to thrive? That's the medical term for the expression G-O-K. God only knows. We know this kid is not growing and developing like she should, but we don't really have any answers. You know what else it is? It's a sucker punch to the gut of a mom. Because as a mom, it's our job to make sure our kid is thriving. And as a type A personality, now I was also a failure to thrive mom. So there were two of us. Was it something I was doing differently? Could I have been doing something better? Was it inner genetics? Nobody had any answers for us. Fortunately, for both of us, when Ellie was about four, I met a new dental colleague and he asked me this question. Has anybody looked at the growth and development of your daughter's mid face and jaw structures to determine if she is capable of consistently breathing in healthy ways. What was he talking about? I didn't learn that in dental school, and I certainly hadn't come across it in our failure to thrive diagnosis. But that question, it started a journey of discovery that opened my eyes to a structural problem that modern day living is creating. It's affecting our ability to breathe properly, it's contributing to many illnesses and ailments, it's affecting our sleep, and it is keeping us from developing to our full genetic potential. You see, we used to believe that the structures of our jaws and faces were simply a result of our parents' genes combining. I was taught in dental school 
that if a kid was born with their mom's jaws and their dad's teeth, there just might not be enough room for all those teeth. It was in their genetics. Well, this isn't completely accurate because what was happening to Ellie and what's happening to countless others today is a result for our bodies compensating for modern day living. And it's affecting us in ways that's not only affecting how we're functioning, but it's also affecting how our structures are developing. I mean, true, we do get our basic genetic code passed down from our parents, but how these genes are expressed, that's also affected by our lifestyle, our environment, and our habits. Now, genetic changes have had an impact on how our facial structures develop, for sure. But lasting changes, like humans developing bigger, smarter brains and therefore needing a different shape to their heads, or even, let's say, penguins trading in their wings for flippers, those types of evolutionary changes take millions of years. And the changes I'm talking about today, we're seeing this in a single generation. These changes are a result of something called epigenetics. Epigenetics is when our lifestyle, environment, and our habits affect the way our genes work. And this can include how our structures are developing. And today, our maxillofacial structures are developing in ways that are keeping us from consistent, healthy breathing day and night. What's causing these detrimental changes? I'm sure you'd like to know. A better question might be what's not, though, because the list is endless. If you're living in modern day society, your system is under chronic attack. It's the air we're breathing, food we're eating, the medications we're taking, the water we're drinking, the exercise we're not getting, and in case for the underdevelopment of our midfaces and jaws, it's anything that's causing us to use our mouths to breathe rather than our noses. And this is starting at a really early age. So let's talk about a couple reasons why. Baby rhesus monkey is pretty cute too, right? Well, in 1981, a group of researchers took some baby rhesus monkeys and they stuffed silicone plugs up their noses so these monkeys could no longer breathe through their noses. As a result, they had to use their facial muscles differently and had an open mouth chronic posture just so they could survive. The baby rhesus monkeys developed a different structure to their head and jaws, and also a different layout of teeth than their parent monkeys and all of the other monkeys. Their midfaces were underdeveloped and their teeth were crowded. That's epigenetics. Similar results, we've seen them in human studies. Dr. Cornicini was an anthropologist who studied rural populations. And he revealed that those populations that had not been impacted by Western diet and lifestyle and nutrition they had really good facial structure formation and a good jaw structure. But with the introduction of Western lifestyle and nutrition, such as processed foods, where we don't have to use our muscles like they were designed to, to, to eat and chew, he saw detrimental changes in the jaw structure formation in over half the population in just a single generation. And it just got worse from there. Malocclusion, that's the fancy dental term for teeth crowding and no longer fitting together like they should. This is also epigenetics, right? So you're starting to get the point. Mouth breathing and poor nutrition early on leads to the smaller structures of our jaws. There's less room for our teeth. Great news for the orthodontic community, right? But there's also less room for our tongue, soft tissue, and other critical airway anatomy. And this is resulting in our difficulty maintaining healthy breathing habits, especially while we're sleeping. And this leads to more mouth breathing. So it's a vicious cycle. Now that you're understanding a little bit about how we got here, I need to tell you why it's so important and we just can't ignore this. You see, research is finding that 90% of us are actually breathing incorrectly. And the number one way that we're breathing incorrectly is that we're using our mouths to breathe rather than our noses. Our bodies and physiology were designed for nasal breathing, and it's having a huge impact on not only our structural development, but our overall health and well-being. Today, over half the kids under the age of nine are chronic mouth breathers. Chronic mouth breathing in kids and its associated effects have been linked to non-restorative sleep, poor concentration, bedwetting, an increase in headaches, subpar academic performance, in fact, it's not uncommon for mouth-breathing kids 
who therefore don't get proper restorative sleep, to be misdiagnosed with ADHD and unnecessarily medicated. Did you know that the signs and symptoms of the two problems are virtually identical? And as more kids are mouth breathing, they're growing into more adults with inadequate structure and function of their airways. Mouth breathing adults, more likely to suffer from sleep disordered breathing problems, an increase in fatigue, poor productivity, an increase in everything from the common cold to diabetes, heart disease, even cancer. Even a slight compromise in how we breathe at night can create a whole host of problems in both kids and adults. The boom in anxiety that we see also has a direct link for both kids and adults because we're not creating the structures that our physiology needs to support our nervous system. A perfect example of unhealthy breathing at night is sleep apnea. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of sleep apnea by now, probably know a few people who have it, right? So who do you picture when I say somebody has sleep apnea? You probably picture this guy, a middle-aged, heavy-set, snoring man. No, not my ex. <laughs> but it probably is this guy. But this is incorrect profiling based on incomplete information. Even though it probably is this guy, it's a whole host of other people that I see every day in my practice that don't fit this profile. It's estimated that half the kids diagnosed with ADHD actually have a sleep breathing problem. This is my 11-year-old son. He was a mouth breather and light snore. Affected him. My sister-in-law, Jennifer, she's a petite, middle-aged woman with TMJ issues, and chronic headaches, sleep apnea. It's even Larry. That's my incredibly fit vegan personal trainer. He didn't think he had it, he did. Common denominator, underdevelopment of the maxillofacial complex combined with not healthy breathing day and night. So in the dental business, what did we do traditionally? We would see these shrinking structures with not enough room for teeth, right? So we would accommodate for this by pulling out the teeth that no longer fit and making a nice smile. It's great. But what we didn't realize is that by accepting this smaller forming maxillofacial complex, it was having huge health impacts. It's the modern day equivalent of creating lotus feet. You guys know what no lotus feet are? The ancient Chinese tradition of breaking the bones of little girls' feet, binding them so that they stay small and can fit into these teeny tiny little structures these teeny tiny little shoes. This was one of the most advanced civilizations of the time, maybe even the most advanced civilization. They didn't know they were creating lifelong disabilities. And as Socrates famously stated, you don't know what you don't know. And in today's advanced civilizations, we don't know that by accepting the smaller forming maxillofacial structure, we're essentially creating lotus mouths, also resulting in lifelong disabilities. What we should have been doing and what we're starting to do now is find ways to promote proper structural development. Create the bigger shoe, right? Our genetic code does have room for all of our body parts, even our appendix, and we don't even know why it's there. Well, maybe we do. I did actually meet a surgeon one time, and he told me the only reason we have an appendix is for it to burst on occasion so the surgeons can send their kids to college. So we even, <laughs> true story, and, and there's room for that. So how, how do we fix this, right? Do we need to move to a remote island? We can grow our own food, breathe fresh air, no cell service Wi-Fi. I see some of you nodding out there. This might be your solution. But for the rest of us, thankfully, there are other options. Because those epigenetic factors that got us into this mess, that's also our ticket out of it. We can influence our physiologies in ways that's either gonna help us or hinder us in coping with the ever-changing demands of modern-day living stresses, right? We can introduce a new set of triggers to design the proper growth and development, and we can combine that with teaching the proper function for breathing for health and wellness. So a great first step is for us all to start using our noses to breathe. Because you've seen how mouth breathing causes detrimental changes to our structural formation and causes all sorts of, health, all sorts of health issues, right? Well, it does turn out that nasal breathing, 
promotes good facial development, and has a countless positive benefits on our health and well-being. I encourage you to look up the benefits of nasal breathing, okay? Because we now know if we can get both kids and adults to regain their ability to breathe properly, their physiology will change for the better. There are dental procedures, appliances, techniques, exercises out there that are aimed at the growth or remodeling of our structures that we can utilize combined with those healthy breathing exercises. So here's that under 60 second solution that I promised you in the beginning. First, do you have a structure that can support nasal breathing? If you don't fix it, there are solutions. Second, is your function healthy? Are you using that structure properly? If not, look up some exercises. And third, to keep living in modern day society, you're probably gonna have to apply some discipline to ensure that your new habits are consistent day in and day out. Structure, function, discipline. So right now my question for you is, can you breathe through your nose? Some of you are sitting there and calmly breathing through your nose, lips together, and you can do this for any length of time. That is great, that's the goal. But do you do it at least 90% of the time? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. We all have different habits. So maybe you just need the discipline part of this equation. There are some fun exercises out there aimed at helping you create your new habits. Look up the benefit of lip taping. You heard me right, lip taping. I'm sure you can think of a few people whose lips you'd like to tape at times, right? Yeah, I know I can. Starting with these two knuckleheads, okay? No, not a hostage situation. These are two of my kids volunteering for this photo. But a note to you other parents out there, they're nasal breathing and it's a whole lot quieter in my house. But seriously, lip taping doesn't usually look like this. This is just my at-home version. This is two of my team members demonstrating what we typically show patients in the office. Just to create a new habit, a little small strip of medical tape, teeny tiny. You can use it during the day or at night to make sure your mouth isn't falling open. And that's for those of you who can consistently breathe through your nose. So it's not for everybody, but look up the benefits of it. I think you'll be surprised. Most of you can probably sit there and breathe through your nose, but maybe not consistently or for any great lengths of time. Maybe you have allergies. But the good news is, if you can do this for one minute or longer with a little bit of work, you can probably get to that 90% or more. There are nasal clearing techniques out there other than picking your nose. And there are those breathing exercises I told you about. What you're gonna need is gonna be very specific to you. Maybe you need to lose some weight, maybe you need allergy testing, or even just calming down your autonomic nervous system. All of those will play a role. Armed with the knowledge that consistent healthy nasal breathing is the end goal, there's a lot of potential solutions out there. And for those of you who cannot, in spite of all your best efforts, obtain consistent healthy nasal breathing, there are both non-surgical and surgical techniques that can help fix this. It is really important. As for Allie, first five years of her life were defined as failure to thrive. She couldn't breathe well, therefore she couldn't eat well, she couldn't sleep well, and she couldn't grow into what her genetics would truly allow. Luckily, we applied some of those epigenetic factors to promote positive changes. I like to say the next five years of her life were defined as creating the ability to thrive. And I'm happy to say now that my 20-year-old daughter has a structure that supports the function of consistent, healthy nasal breathing should she choose to apply that discipline. So here's my plea for you. Now that you know this, you can't unknow it. If we can affect the lives of just half the people that fall through this crack, our world becomes more rested, healthier, more productive, and probably a lot more kind. We can give people the potential to thrive, not just survive. Breath is life, and life is breath. Thank you.